Hello everyone! Today I'm quilting up the November large project from the Open Gate Quilts subscription box. These cute little Christmas houses come with this Maywood studio collection with all the little snowflakes and trees. Super festive and fun. I really loved putting this piece together and I thought I would go ahead and share with you how my strategy works out for quilting this top. This is sort of an experiment for me because I have the ruler base on this machine for the first time. I've used a sit down machine for years and I loved how that worked out and I used rulers all the time. But for this, I had the attachment on the base of the machine. So I have a nice flat surface. I have a ruler foot on the machine as well. And then I'm able to work on this frame with my little rulers. So the first thing I did was I wanted to add narrow, what's called piano keys to the border. So this allows me to have just these little straight lines go up and down and then I have to work from left to right on the sides. And I was really meticulous with this at first. I wanted half inch spacing between those lines. But then there was one incident where I accidentally only went a quarter of an inch. So then I just started to freestyle it. As long as I just had some pretty straight lines, I was happy with that. And then as I got more comfortable with the ruler, I was able to make those straight lines without it. So then I was really just winging it towards the end. But to start off with, it's nice to have a plan and put these rulers down until you figure out the rhythm and the muscle memory and keep going from there. The center of this piece was a lot of fun because it's already sort of a cheater cloth. It has this design in place where the patchwork is already outlined for me. So I didn't feel like covering that up with an overall design. I went ahead and used those lines as my guide to go around each of those snowflakes. And I wasn't afraid to double back if I went over the line a little bit. I could always come back and retrace over it. I'm using a light green thread that blends pretty well. And the largest design in this is less than four inches, which is what my batting recommendation is to quilt within. So this really does work out very well. And I like how these designs float and pop a little bit from that dense quilting that I'm gonna do around the perimeter of this and it keeps it nice and clean. I only used one quilt ruler for this entire project and it is this ruler by Natalia Bonner with Peace in Quilt. It's the four in one mini ruler. I love this ruler because it fits inside my hand. It has a nice straight edge, but it also has a gentle curve on the uh, other side. So those are the two sides that I used and it was really nice to guide along these straight edges. You can see me do a little bit of correction here, but also I've learned with this ruler about the gentle pressure that Natalia talks about in her videos. So we're not, when I was doing up my sit down and domestic quilting, I relied on rulers for every move that I was gonna make. But with the machine, it's a lot more smooth on the frame. And I'll use that ruler just to steady my hand a little bit and guide the machine along. So it is a little bit different practice, but I had a lot of fun and I love these nice straight lines that came out. So now you see that I'm done filling in that center panel and I'm just adding these little pebbles all the way around. So this light green thread, it looks very light on the cone, but it's always a different story when it's on the actual quilt. This turned out a little bit darker than I wanted against that white fabric. It's a tonal fabric though that has gray. And when it was all said and done, I liked it a lot more. Under these bright lights quilting on this panel, you can, I mean, these pebbles look pretty dark around with that thread, but it did soften up in natural light. And as I move the quilt around, around that batting will puff a little bit and sort of eat up that thread that's been placed around it. So keep that in mind, you know, what you do on bright lights with a darker thread is gonna be very exaggerated in that environment. The pebbles allow me to travel over to my next block and here is where I am quilting the little houses. I decided to go with these horizontal lines. Here you're seeing it vertical because the house is sideways, but it reminds me of the slats, like the vinyl slats on the side of a house 
I was very <laughs> adamant that I was going to add a little door, like a rectangle at the bottom of the house to just put in that little element that wasn't part of the piecing. But the first house that I did, I forgot to do it. So now they're just uh, houses, <laughs> like maybe we're looking at the back of the house or the side of the house that doesn't have any doors or windows, but it's still a beautiful design. <laughs> and I think this helps it out a lot. So these quarter inch lines are going to flatten out these houses a lot. You will see as I move my hand around, like I did not piece this very straight. Um, it, it was a mess. It's all over the place. <laughs> and I had to work with that. So the pebbles help eat up some of that fullness that I had inside the fabric. And then these lines flatten out other pieces to help move that fabric where it needs to be. And then to end with these corners, I'm just filling that all with pebbles. And for these, I let them be a little bit bigger. I had more fullness to work in through those sides. I really wanted to quilt a snowflake here and then put this filler over it, but it just was out of my comfort zone right now for the first time using this ruler base. And you can see how much I have to pinch that fabric through and work it in. So this was the safer option and when the light hits this from the side, it's a table topper, it goes up on my kitchen island and the sun comes in from the side and all these little pebbles floating up and casting their little shadows. Very pretty. I'm really happy that I chose this design element over just what I would have done with snowflakes and more straight lines and maybe some swirls. Just overall fun and it was very mindless sewing where I could just focus on my circles. With my moxie frame, I had to work through some boxiness on my swirls. And once I, that frame loosened up and settled in, making these perfect round elements worked out a lot better for it. So you can see that I'm overlapping some of them. It looks dark here, but it did smooth out <laughs> within the fabric. And you can see where there's a little more fullness in each pebble. Here is that quilt in the bright, outdoor light and as I zoom in I mean you can see those pebbles pretty close but as I'm standing away from it you just see the overall texture and this really pretty fabric coming through all those lines. I did have one little tension issue I wanted to show you that was the end of the bobbin so I had to pluck out a lot more than I thought I did and when I drew a new line that tension issue was still in the back, so that's how this wrapped up. <laughs> Next for Open Gate Quilts is this Heading North Table Runner. This was in the December box. They've got lots of flying geese and contrasting colors, so stay tuned for how I quilt up this one. 